Welcome everyone, Kevin Carpenter, back for another year of CPPCon 2023 and sitting with Jason Turner, which is really kind of funny for me because considering CPP cast and C++ Weekly, I'm like the, ne the neophyte, is that the right word? I mean, you've got all the experience of doing these things, so. <laughs> Between CPP cast and C++ Weekly, I have recorded uh, almost four, almost 800 like episodes of things. Yeah. And plus if you include other interviews that I've been on, yeah, I think it's probably, it's probably about 800 in total now. That's, that's incredible. And the thing that's funny to me is I was just thinking about it because you were one of the first interviews I did. I think, I think it was either 18 or 19, but I just remember doing the interview because it, towards the end, you're like, well, let me flip this back around and ask you a question which threw me totally off guard. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> Like, um, uh, yeah, so, so, but uh, we're here to talk about your C++ best practices class you're doing this year at the conference, right? Yep, post-conference class, uh, as well, as you said, C++ best practices. Um, I've given this class to hundreds of students in every field you can name pretty much. Uh, this is a class that I'm often hired to teach on site for corporations. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's a highly adaptable class. Like I have enough material for at least three, four days. Right. And it yeah. depends so much on what questions the students ask. So just like any class that I teach, I, I don't really know exactly what we're going to talk about because depending on what the students ask, we will just you know, form the class mm -hmm. material to the students who are there. That's pretty cool. So, I mean, when I think about it, because you have your C++ best practices book, and I'm sure that you, you share some things in there, but... I, you know, so I'm going to use this example. When I think of a class that I took with Klaus and then I think of the book that he wrote, the amount of difference is just vast. So I'm imagining right. yours is the same. It's like the book has some things in it, but what you can do in the class, just because you said it's a bit more dynamic with the students is is far greater, right? Yeah, I mean, and then the book is like the succinct things that I see the same kind of mistakes over and over again in like code reviews, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what the book is about. It's like, if you just apply these, you know, 45 like actionable principles in your project, then you will have better code. And, right. you know, a lot of that's tooling and stuff like that too. Um, and, and the class, yeah, I mean, there's overlap there, of course, but then we can talk like specific examples and people, you know, sometimes I have students where I'm saying, well, you know, you should prefer a uh, standard algorithm in this case or whatever. And they're mm -hmm. like, well, but I hate Lambda syntax and whatever. So I take the opportunity to flip it around on them and be like, well, if, if you've got a, uh, if you name the Lambda outside right. of the algorithm call, now your algorithm call reads like a sentence and, you know, and I can like change people's opinions once I hear what their specific complaints and concerns are, you know? Right. And so the class is good for those that have your book that want to get more clarification and <laughs> absolutely and understanding as well. I did a class in the Netherlands one year ago. Uh, when was that? Oh, that was July of last year. It was after C++ on C last year, actually. Okay. And um, that class had made a point of going through my best practices book together. And I'm not going to give any spoilers here, right? But in uh, the first day of the class, one of the people in the class is like, hey, you know, like, we didn't really understand your guidance in this particular topic. Like, why did you say this here? And I'm like, no, 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 you're, you're not thinking about it right. And I gave them a little bit more of clarification. And the next day, that student comes back for the next day of the class. And he says, like, I took what you said and I applied it in this chunk of code. And it's now half as long and I found three bugs in the process and I'm like there see like <laughs> that's the point you know yep. um so yeah just the opportunity particularly yeah if you have read the book to come in and be like you know what I don't I want to argue with you on this point great let's do that let's let's sort this out you know and that kind of fits with the way I I always like your talks because you don't sit in one of your talks without being called on in the audience. And it doesn't matter if the audience is you know, a couple hundred people. 
I set myself up for that. I the first real full length talk I gave was a, a talk called Thinking Portable at C now in 2015. I think it was 15. And um, I didn't really intend for it to be a very interactive talk, but it's C now. And so it was an interactive <laughs> talk. Right. And people asked me questions, and I'm like, I don't. I don't know the answer to that. You know, with, just for the record, if you've never spoken at a conference before and you're thinking about it, being willing to say you don't know the answer, say you don't know the answer, right? Right. And then take it to the next step and say, I don't know the answer. Is there anyone in the room who does? Yeah. And then you get like insto interaction with your room that you would never get otherwise. Right. So that coincidentally happened at C++ Now. And... um it was a, uh, it was good. There was a lot of people in the room. They answered things that I didn't know the answer to. And, and then when I went to do my CVP con plenary session that I did on the Commodore 64, which some of the viewers watching this have probably seen, um, I, I was like, I have to figure out how to make it interactive, even though there's going to be like a thousand people in the room. Yeah. And, and now, now I'm just on that trajectory. I have to make everything as interactive as I can. Um, I, I take into account the audience and the location where I'll be speaking and stuff as well. But anyhow, yeah. It is, it's funny because the one of the first, you know, I have not given near the amount of talks you have, but one of the first talks I'd given, um, I did not focus as much on the interaction. And then this last year for the talks that I gave, it's definitely a different feeling when you know that you, you know, you have the audience's, attention it's not one of those ones where you think of the old lecture hall and someone's just drilling information down you actually are you know getting people and there's feedback going and you're discussing things and um so that being said your class is going to be excellent and you're I, as you're talking like as well <laughs> so you know if, if do you do we have time because i have one random other aside that i would like to mention absolutely of course so my nephew uh, was just graduating from high school this past year, and he had to give a presentation uh, to several of his instructors as part of his graduation requirements. And I'm like, dude, ask the instructors a question at the beginning of your presentation, because then they'll like wake up and respond to you and you get the interaction. And he's like, wait a minute, are you telling me that I can get them to do part of my my <laughs> presentation for me and i'm like yes and they're like oh yeah one of the best presentations we had this year just ask the audience some questions <laughs> you're gonna give away your secrets chief <laughs> uh, you know what it's fine <laughs> so aside from the class you were talking about doing some open content this year too right you want to talk about that Right, sure. So I am not giving any regular content sessions. Let's just go ahead and get that out there. But I am hoping, uh, I haven't submitted them yet for clarity, so hopefully they get accepted by the powers that be here. But I'm hoping uh, at least on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to do a lunch like C++ conversations thing. Each day will have a different, um, different topic. It'll be a little bit of kind of a uh, a little bit of a, a preview into how like my training works, but at the same time, it'll just be fun and a, and a big room conversation I'm hoping for. I'm hoping to do that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at the moment. Right on. Maybe Friday if I'm feeling particularly full of energy, but. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's my, my goal at the moment. Cool. And so then just to let everybody know too. So uh, Jason is probably going to be signing books and we're going to have Jason's books at the bookstore or at the CPP cash this year. So, you know, once you come to the conference, uh, come on by, check out the CPP cash, grab a book, uh, get Jason to sign it, hang out at lunch, but more importantly, improve your best practices, sign up for the best practices class that Jason's going to run post conference. And if you do want your book signed and you come up to me, give me a minute because I am still not practiced at this. It always feels awkward to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't imagine that, but I know how hard it is writing a book too, because that's why I haven't done it yet. So you deserve <laughs> right. to be able to do the signing. <laughs> I do recommend self-publishing as a start. 
yes, that's probably a good way to go. Jason, I appreciate your time this morning. I look forward to seeing you at the conference here in a few weeks. Absolutely. See you in a few weeks. Talk to you soon. Thanks.